Welcome to King's Bishop Teaches Chess. I'm Coach Daniel, your host, also known as King's Bishop here at chess.com. And we're bringing um, some game analysis today. Three games were submitted, and the uh, player for whom we're analyzing these games will remain anonymous. We designated him as player A. A beginner and prone to beginner type mistakes. And if player A can um, shore up these mistakes, he'll no longer be a beginner. He'll move into the intermediate level. And so we want to take some time to repeat some things that we already know. And I'm sure that player A already knows the things that I'm going to mention in this game. But there's a matter of having the discipline to um, make sure of these these principles in chess moves. So let's get into it. Um, this game started out with e4 and e5, so we've got a great start. This is the opening we teach our beginners to play. Pawn to the e4 square and it's black, pawn to the e5 square. Taking up a presence in the center of the board. Also, knight f3. Getting your knight out of bed and striking right at the center. Now here we offer our beginners an option of either playing the four knights game or the Italian game. The Italian game is selected here. Two knights defense, very good. Both sides getting a look at the center, both sides getting their pieces out of bed. No problems so far. Knight to c3, knight takes e4. This is actually one of my favorite lines as black. And after knight takes knight, you have this center fork. So black temporarily gives up his knight, but he'll get it right back. Now here we have the first blunder. Um, player A played knight to c5. And so he still has two pieces under attack. So it's something important uh, that we understand about moving our pieces that we always identify whether the square to which we're moving is hot or safe. Now we have to recognize too that our opponent is threatening both of these pieces. And he's going to capture one or the other. So if you just go back, black has captured a pawn and white has captured a knight. If you allow white to capture the bishop or the knight, then you're already a pawn behind. So you should recoup your material. And so there are two ways you can do it. Either directly take the pawn, or if you want to keep your bishop, retreat the bishop and capture. There's actually another move that you can play here that I've seen people play. And that's bishop to b5. 
with the idea of capturing the E-Man. I don't like that as much because there are all kinds of nasties looming uh, that could be problematic for white. So probably best to just bring your bishop back. And now the material is equal. So don't fear this center fork maneuver. But definitely be cautious when you're moving your pieces that you're looking whether that square is hot or safe. And this one is hot. The bishop can go there. And he does. And this attack is still present. So blunder number one is knight to c5 not recouping the material and moving to a hot square. Well, blunder number two is this move right here. When you're anticipating or calculating or determining where to put your pieces and you recognize that your piece is in danger so you decide you're going to run away it's not enough to determine that d3 is safe at the moment. You need to identify your opponent's continuation. What will he play in response to your move? And you need to recognize that if you move your bishop to d3, it will allow your opponent to create another fork with another pawn. And you just saw this fork played. So you're familiar with this triangle forking pattern that pawns make. So to move here is to allow another fork. So blunder one, number one had to do with not recognizing a hot square and not considering the opponent's continuation. Blunder number two had to do with thinking that d3 is safe and not recognizing the opponent's continuation. It's only one move deep. You don't even have to calculate. All you have to do is ask yourself the question, what would I do if I was black and white had a bishop on d3? Sometimes I like to get on the other side of the board and imagine this bishop here with my mind. And then you can see, oh, that's going to be a fork. I can't move there. So what would have been better? What should white have done? I already told you on this other move that white should have either just taken or retreated as bishop. I'll let you tell me what should white do instead of playing bishop to d2 or d3, excuse me. And probably the best move is bishop to b5, pinning this knight. because then you'll win a pawn back. <clears throat> but if you said bishop to e2, um, that's safe. Your opponent will still probably play e4. And where are you going to go with this knight but back to bed? So, yeah, I'm sure this is the best move. If he plays to e4 here, you can play knight to e5. You could play pawn to d4, attacking the bishop. Or you can simply 
take the knight and then move your own knight to safety. <clears throat> okay, bishop to d3 allows the fork. Castles. And really, uh, you probably should keep your bishop. So come to bishop e2, and when he takes, get your keep your bishop in the game. Because here now he can take your bishop, and then if you take back, you've got double isolated pawns, and it's really going to be hard for this bishop to get out of bed. <clears throat> Black actually did not take the bishop. He should have. Now, this is a mistake by Black. You have two pieces on pre, and I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, that fork is still going to be there, so I might as well develop and create a pen. It's somewhat understandable, but look at what happens. And I know perhaps you're worried about this check here. I'm going to show you it's not anything about which to worry. Because if, if he gives you check, you can play bishop e6, and you're defended by this pawn. And then if he takes, he's got these doubled pawns. This d2 pawn isn't going anywhere. So he's going to have to take time to get his bishop out the back door. Would have been much better. Well, bishop g4 is played, bishop e2, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And black is winning this pretty easily. Black has got two pieces out of bed. White only has his queen out of bed. And black is in the lead by a full knight. Castles on to d3. Queen h4. I don't know if queen h4 is necessary here and leave this pawn where it can be captured. Remember that rooks like open files. So this would have probably been a better move. I mean, Black's winning, so he's being very aggressive. I'm sure he plans to play bishop to d6 and try a cheapo here on h7, uh, h2. Pretty common um, one-move wonder that a lot of beginners try, and it makes sense. I mean, even... Intermediate players and advanced players often will go for this pawn, so. Pawn to d3. Uh, g3. I said d3. Pawn to g3. It does attack the queen, but it is a one-move wonder. You might as well get some material back and put this bishop in danger. He's going to have to spend a move. He'll certainly go for this one move wonder, then play g3. <clears throat> go back. Oh, now he took queen takes d5. Knight d4. He sees this weak square on f3. Of course, it's defended by the queen, so he can't go in there right now. But he also sees this undefended pawn. So this central square for the knight makes a lot of sense.
Rook E1 does not really make a lot of sense. You need to get your other bishop out of bed. So I understand, Rook E1, you want to get on the open file, but you've got to be concerned about your opponent's attacks. Let's get those rooks connected. I'd get this bishop out of bed. Either to f4 or d2. Rook e1. You still have this defended, but you're only poisoning yourself for a fork. Not that the fork will matter, because if the, queen, the knight arrives safely to f3, it will be checkmate on the following move. And here, black attacks the queen. Now, black has left his bishop unprotected. However, it's tactically protected. In other words, black is not worried in the slightest about his bishop being captured because black knows the queen is overworked. It cannot capture the bishop and protect the f3 square. <clears throat> he can't do both jobs. And so for that reason, the queen has to retreat and probably put the question to its counterpart so as uh, to keep the f3 square defended and to offer a queen trade so that this checkmate threat is removed. But player A decided to take the so-called free bishop well, it's an excellent move if you want to lose the game. And this is not only a fork, but more importantly, it's attacking the magic square. These squares are controlled by the queen, so there's only one legal move. And there's checkmate. So both sides made some mistakes here. It's very critical in chess that you understand what your opponent is doing. And you should never make a move until you understand why your opponent made his move. What was the purpose? Why did Black take this pawn? Why would he give away a knight for a pawn? Well, he wouldn't. You fully understand here that he intends to fork your bishop and your knight. And that's okay because you're coming out equal if you play the right move. If I'm thinking about moving to a square, I need to imagine my piece on that square and say, what will my opponent do? And if you have to, stand up and go to the other side and look at the board from the other side. What would I do if I had black and there was a knight standing on c5? Hot square. and not play that move. The only real choices here are bishop takes pawn or bishop to d3. And now you're equal. Again, what will my opponent do if I move to d3? If you use your imagination and visualization, it should be easy to see that this pawn will come and 
create a fork. And so you'll want to pin his knight so that if he attacks your knight, you can move it to e5. Although even that might be a bit hazardous in view of the fact that you haven't castled. So you might have to come up with some alternate plan. But for beginner chess, you know, he probably should play this move. And you're still in a little bit of trouble here, but... Really, giving away the center is never a good idea. Yeah, he'll probably play this if he attacks. You probably have to counterattack. Give the check. And then get your rook to safety. did my opponent give me a free bishop? Ask that question. Why did he give me a free bishop? Why didn't he move his bishop to safety? Or why didn't he protect his bishop? Why did he give me a free bishop here? What will he do if I take that bishop? You need to understand he's deflecting your queen away from the defense of f3 and the bishop is nothing but a big fat decoy if you ask and answer those questions you'll find better moves in chess so until next time have a great day and play some great chess Bye now.